As regular viewers of this channel will be well aware by now, I'm no natural ally of the taxpayer-funded behemoth that is the BBC. So that's why it might be surprising to hear me fight its corner, as it announces its decision to leave Stonewall's Diversity Champions programme, in which public bodies, finance giants and others strive for a spot on its Diversity Champion leaderboard. Stonewall, in reply, have said that this decision by the BBC to quit will harm LGBTQ plus whatever the other letters are in the alphabet staff, and that the news comes in the wake of organised attacks on workplace inclusion. Bollocks. Here's why the BBC are right to do this. It was all set out in a fantastic 10-part BBC podcast series by the broadcaster Stephen Nolan and his team. There's another compliment for the BBC that you don't hear me parroting often. From 2015, Stonewall decided, right, that it had no further fight to fight, like St George in retirement, having slayed the dragon, or in Stonewall's case, helped secure same-sex marriage and the abolition of Section 28, there was no further campaign to fight. Section 28, of course, being the banning of teaching of same-sex relationships in schools. They swung their sword, hoping for another dragon to slay, but couldn't find one. Until the charity decided that it would add to its mission the advocacy of transgender people. Now, it adopted the ideology of gender identity, something which it has to be said, a, I think, what will be a majority of trans people just want to be left alone, quite like things as they are, just want to be left alone, accepted by society, and um, basically having achieved those aims, just be left by groups like Stonewall, who speak for a vocal minority. So they believe in gender identity as opposed to biological sex. And they believe in that being the determining factor in establishing the, dis the difference between men and women. Now, it comes from the wackery and wokery of academic so-called queer theory. Now, before I go off on a tangent and start waxing lyrical about the Marxist undertones of all of this, it's worth pointing out just how catastrophic the implications would be for gay men and women, actually, and indeed wider society. When sex doesn't exist anymore, you see, being gay doesn't exist. Being a woman doesn't exist. The difference between men and women don't exist in sport, in bathrooms, in changing rooms, in schools, and so on and so forth. Stonewall have decided that to be gay doesn't mean that I'm attracted to a bloke. The same sex as me, same biological sex, that immutable fact, but instead means to be attracted to someone of the same identity. Now, the implications of this orthodoxy being adopted by the group would go on to have really, really quite severe implications. And the BBC podcast by Stephen Nolan revealed that other taxpayer-funded institutions had accepted this new gender identity orthodoxy with gusto. The accusations of transphobia have actually suspended debate around this issue, so it was brave of the BBC to tackle it head on with people too afraid to speak out against Stonewall for fear of losing their livelihoods and reputation. The CEO of Stonewall, Nancy Kelly, once likened people acknowledging biological sex as an immutable fact, i.e. most of the sodden population, with anti-Semites. Again, in what is clearly an attempt to shut down debate and speech. Liz Truss, in her Equalities Minister brief, has said that public bodies should leave the scheme. She could tell her department, actually, the Foreign Office, that they ought to listen to her advice. With it being reported by the Times that officials in the Foreign Office signed up to the scheme without the nod from the Minister. Pretty extraordinary stuff. And it's expensive for the taxpayer, right? Stonewall made over three million quid in fees last year. It's about time this organisation was exposed. An organisation that a report by Essex University found that university policy stated the law as Stonewall would prefer it to be rather than the law as it actually is. That's dangerous for the organisations being offered this dud advice. Gets you in trouble. Ultimately, as far as taxpayer cash is concerned, we shouldn't be wasting precious limited resources on a group of radical activists that reckon biological sex doesn't exist that trans women should be able to compete in women's rugby, for example, and so on 
and so forth. If you want to know how our public bodies went absolutely trans-stupid, look no further than Stonewall. So folks, to summarise, to end, to shut me gob, here's to the BBC making the right call, and here's to more public bodies protecting the public purse from gender ideology by saying no to this group and its diversity scheme. I'm Darren Grimes for Reasoned UK. Thank you so much for watching this video. Reasoned is a grassroots organisation that's entirely funded by people like yourself. So if you're in a position to do so, please do consider supporting us by clicking the link to the side there.